So time to get some uh, gas, which most people don't go for the fridge for it, but still water. Okay, I was about to refill the uh, electrolyzer because I haven't filled it since last Wednesday and I figured with all this heat it would have evaporated quite a bit of it. So there's my gallon of pre-mixed uh, fluid. Um, I put one teaspoon per quart of water. So there's actually four teaspoons of baking soda in a gallon. Four quarts in a gallon. Um, but when I got out here and I looked, I don't know if you can tell or not, but the water level is right there. So I have absolutely no need to fill it. All right, so there's the electrolyzer. All right, one vacuum hose goes into the intake. Okay, and this hose actually runs into the intake tube and ends right before the throttle body, right there. Okay, so it's all the way in there. I did have a fitting right here that it was just plugged into. This seems to work better running into it though. Okay, the other vacuum hose goes into a T right there, which goes into the intake. Okay. The 12 volt is running into the cab, you can see right there, okay. for a switch power. The ground is actually just a chassis ground, I actually have it ground up here. Uh, this water is fairly new, this water has been in here for less than a week. And you can see this isn't fully con well conditioned yet. It's still uh, almost clear, and there's no sludge on the bottom of this one yet. I've only driven it twice since I put this water in here. Huh? Now on the tube itself, I followed everything that it said to do. I have a bubbler, um, pressure release valve, and then I have these. I picked up a. a um, like a fish supply store. These are one-way valves, one-way bubblers, so gas can only flow in this direction, and if any gas pushes in this direction, it actually closes the valve and nothing goes in. Um, I think that I'm pretty confident that the vacuum line and the intake hose are both needed, because at low RPMs, the vacuum line pulls, the vacuum line pulls, and it pulls hard enough that it closes this check valve. And then when you open the RPM, the one that's in the intake, when your foot's on the gas, pulls hard enough that it closes the other check valve. So this is definitely pulling stronger at higher RPMs, and this is definitely pulling stronger at idle. So both of them just make sense. I don't know why you wouldn't do both of them. So that's that. Give me a second here, and I'll start it. Okay, so I've been for a drive. Probably about uh, nine miles. I went across town. So everything's up to operating temperature now. So I've got my thermometer here. And this thermometer is just one you just point it at a surface. And it'll tell you how hot that surface is. So the side of the truck is 91.7 degrees, which is about right because it's uh, about 90 degrees out here. Right? So let's see how hot the bottle gets. The bottle is 118.1 degrees. Let's see how hot the block is getting. That's 170.3 degrees. Now let's see how warm our exhaust is. Now this reading isn't going to be the most accurate though because this has a harder time reading a gas. So I'm really just measuring the uh, temperature of the exhaust pipe, which is 150 degrees. So the exhaust is about 36 degrees cooler than it is without the generator. The engine block is about 50 degrees cooler than it is with the generator. And if we go to the generator again, so we'll find it's hotter at 118.5. And I can actually hold it on here. Watch the temperature climb. The longer I leave it running, the warmer it will get. But when you're driving, it's funny to wear them. It doesn't ever get. I've never measured it above 135 degrees.
All right, now you can barely see it down there, but down there is the exhaust pipe. And that's the oxygen sensor. And the little silver collar on it is the extender that brings it three quarters of an inch out of the tailpipe. Okay, and then this right here is the knob I had for my map adjuster. Um, I've actually disconnected it right now though because I found that with the O2 extender, collar on the O2 sensor, the mixture was lean enough and my temperatures were getting pretty high. So I, uh, so this is disconnected right now. I don't think I'm actually gonna need this in this truck. Um, from what I understand from people I've talked to, some vehicles need it, some vehicles don't. It just ran too lean in this one, so I disconnected it. Okay, so here's something else kind of fun. Truck's running. Here's a perfectly clean white piece of styrofoam. Okay. And you're not really gonna see the difference because you didn't do it before, but when you do yours, look at, do this before you do it, do it after you do it. I'm just gonna hold down the exhaust. And hold on it for a long time. And I'm holding the foot up against it. And that's it. It melted some of the styrofoam, but notice there's absolutely no black uh, residue or soot on the styrofoam. And beforehand, there definitely was.